Okay, I'm going to read through these rules and then we'll go through a couple examples here, okay? <laughs> now, when I say syllables, does everybody understand what I mean when I say syllables? Okay, so my name Matthew, how many syllables? Two. Two. Okay, the name Lake, how many syllables? One. One. Okay, uh, this is something that's just basically how many syllables, how many accents that we have, okay? So within those syllables, when it comes to pronunciation, when it comes to the Greek, Greek has syllables too, but they have some really distinct rules. And as you guys learn this, it's kind of somewhat natural. We, we do this in our own English language to a certain extent. Um, so what we want to keep in mind is with the Greek language, we only have one vowel per syllable. Can we have two vowels? No. Okay. So how many vowels per syllable? One. Can I ask Kirby, can we close those doors there for the sound? Okay. What about the diphthong thing? Doesn't that count as a... Now, diphthongs, good question, Kirby brought it up. Diphthongs, how many vowels in a diphthong? Two. Two. Now, we would say only one vowel per syllable or one diphthong per syllable. Does that make sense? Okay. That makes sense, you guys? So how many vowels per syllable? One. One. Now, if we have a diphthong, we can actually, there's going to be two vowels, but they produce one vowel sound. Okay, so there'll be one diphthong per syllable. Okay? And here's the other thing, is every syllable must contain a vowel or syllable, so cannot stand just with a consonant, okay? So every syllable has to have a vowel, okay? So what that means, you might have some syllables where it just might be just a vowel, okay? Where there won't be any consonants. The vowel will stand alone, or the diphthong will stand alone as the syllable. Some examples here. When possible, consonants begin each one syllable. So when possible, we have a consonant that begins each syllable. What do I mean by consonant, you guys? A consonant is going to be anything that is not a what? Vowel. Okay? So what are our vowels of the Greek language? Alpha, right? Epsilon, Iota, Eta, Upsilon, Omicron, one more. Omega. Omega. I think we all got them all there. Okay? So, when possible, we want to start each syllable with a consonant. It would be a non-vowel. Okay? So, I'm going to write a couple examples up here. Uh, we're going to start with this word here. And I'm going to have you guys try to pronounce it here. Okay? Try not to look on the sheet there, okay? Um, I kind of broke it up for you guys. So just look up here. So what kind of word do we have here? Okay? How would we pronounce this? Well, I actually <laughs> broke out the syllables on here for you already. So I'm going to have us break right. out the syllables here. Okay? But <clears throat> so we look at this word. So we start off with what letter? Epsilon. Yeah. Epsilon. And it has what kind of sound? E. E. Then we have a lambda. E. Lu. Sa, my. Now, how do we break this up? Okay. So when possible, we start each syllable with a consonant. Okay. So we look here. Now we start with an epsilon, right? Yep. Okay. We can't start with the consonant, right? Now we look over here, and we have what? What is that? The e, the epsilon, and the uh, uh, upsilon. It's a, it's a diphthong. Okay. And then we have another what? Sigma, and then another. Vowel, followed by another consonant, and then another what? Diphthong. So how many vowels slash diphthongs do we have here? One, two, three, four. So how many syllables are we going to have in this word? Four. I almost went like this. <laughs> how many syllables? We're going to have four, four syllables. Okay? Four syllables. So, now... Using the rules where each syllable must have a vowel or a diphthong, okay? And when possible, we start off each syllable with a consonant. Where am I going to draw the lines here to divide this up into syllables? The first one go after the first epsilon. Right here. Good. And then the lambda and the diphthong. Yep, good. And right here. Oh. Okay, now what we're doing is, look what we just did now. Does each syllable, we have four syllables, does each syllable have a vowel or a diphthong? Yep. Yes. 
And when possible, we have three out of the four syllables starting with what? Consonants. So, e, lu, sa, mai. Okay? It's like Sesame Street, right? E, lu, sa, mai. E, lu, sa, mai. E, lu, sa, mai. Okay? Got it? Sure. All right, you guys want to try one more? All right, where's my eraser? All right. <clears throat> Now, first thing we want to do is how many vowels do we have? Two. Now, first question is, is this a diphthong? It actually isn't. You know, that's, that's why I threw it up here to trick you guys. It is not a diphthong, okay? So we have one vowel, two vowel, three vowels. So how many syllables? Three. Three, okay? Now, when possible, we're going to start off each syllable with a what? Consonant. So we're going to start off this right now. So where are we going to put the first syllable? Start off with the consonant, lambda. And then we have an upsilon. And we can't include this omicron, right? Because we'd have, what, two vowels in one syllable. So I'm going to draw the line right here. So we're going to start off with lu. Okay? Now, when possible, we want to start off each syllable with a consonant if possible. But we can here. So, what are we going to do with this move? We're going to put it here or here? On this side. And the reason being, we want to start off when possible every consonant with, or every syllable with the consonant. So I'm going to draw a line right here. So now we have three syllables. Is there a vowel in each syllable? Yep. So how would we say this? Lu, a, men. Let's try it again. Lu, ha, men. Good job. Okay? You guys are reading Greek? Okay? Alright, let's try one more. So, now, first thing we look at this word. Okay? How many vowels do we have? Two. Two. So how many syllables? Two. Two syllables. Now, when possible, we start off each syllable with what? Consonant. Consonant. So, the question then that we have then we have two syllables. Are we going to draw the line between is it going to be pat ross or pa tross? Okay? That's the dilemma that we have because where do we put the syllable divide? Do we put it right here? So pa tross? Or do we put it in between here and go pat ross? Because the tau and the rho are both what? Consonants. Here's the general rule on this, okay? And this is going to be very subjective. When possible, we can follow kind of what our English does. There are going to be certain words that I have written down, like the T and the R. Like we have, like in track, the T and the R, they kind of blend together. Mm -hmm. Or the B and the R, as in bridge, the B and R work together. Or the TH, R in our English language, like through, they kind of work together. Um, S and T, do they work together mm -hmm. in street? So when possible, use the same kind of uh, conclusions that we have from English language for Greek. So we have a tau and a rho, they tend to go together. Tr, you know, the tr sound. So in appealing, I know this is very subjective, but appeal to our English language and look at the English language, which ones kind of blend together. So I give you some examples there. Or like in the English language, like the C and the R, as in Crestwood. See the C and the R? So for this, what we would do is we would tend to just do what's more um, works with our English language, and we actually draw the line down here and go, pop, what? Cross. Okay? I know that's going to be very subjective, but appeal to your um, English language experience in, in with those consonants like that. But if it's two consonants that don't really blend together, then you, you slice down the middle. Okay?